Hello everyone, back to tuning in to the 7th Autumn 2021 update from Gaz. Well, so here we go again, it's time to bring you another Autumn update on this uh, Sunday morning. So uh, we're going to be looking at July CT data uh, for this one. I should talk you through that in a second, just to say that the first video released today was our 7am forecast. Uh, we've also uh, got Gaz over his Sunday roundup coming up for you just after lunchtime. time. I'm going to be live streaming uh, from 6 o'clock, so uh, I shall see you live at at six for our Sunday evening live stream. Uh, right, so I've uh, got to say thank you so much to uh, Rich for the amazing Autumn 2021 Updates gift. Thank you so much, Rich, for the gift. I love the Autumn Updates gift. It's always so vibrant with the colours and, and so colourful and tranquil. So thank you so much to uh, Rich for the gift. And also thank you to Shryan Brewer, my good friend Shryan, for helping get all of the uh, years together for, for this uh, update. So thank you so much to Rich and thank you so much to uh, Shryan. It'll be quite a long, longish video, of course, as always with the uh, uh, long range stuff so um you can't watch julian go then it will be placed within or it is now placed within um the autumn updates playlist on the youtube homepage so you can come back and watch a video on demand whenever you would like to do that and uh, and that's no problem uh, whatsoever so so you'll be able to watch a video on demand um you know through the playlist uh thank you so much uh to all of you for doing that right okay so let's get on with the seventh autumn 2020 update of course we are getting ever closer towards the end of these updates now, I'll we'll be releasing the Gaz Webby's autumn forecast on the 29th of August. Um, so, you know, we're into the last month of updates uh, now. We are reaching the business end, so it won't be much longer to wait until you see what we're forecasting uh, for this autumn. But we've got a few more updates to do for you before we get to that. Uh, right, so uh, CET then. So the central temperature, now this is still provisional uh, as I'm recording this uh, from Hadling, showing 18.4. But my good friend Simon, aka Global Warming at the Weather Outlook, is uh, predicting that we're going to finish up at 17.7. That is the projection for the July central England temperature uh, this uh, this year. You know, uh, So 17.7 is likely to be the finishing number. It's going to be a large downwards correction this month. So, so not not a, a plus 18 Celsius CT uh, month, actually 17.7. So we're going to the CT range for this update. We're going to be looking at autumns following Julys with a CT range of 17.4 to 18.0 and that of course is going to place July 2021 slap bang in the middle of that CT range. And I say thank you so much to Shrine for sorting out all of these uh, years. Right, so this is the first one then. This is uh, autumn 1847 following a July CT range of 17.4 to 18.0. This is an anticyclonic autumn with high pressure tending to be across northern and Western Europe. So a lot of dry weather during uh, that autumn, anticyclonic and fine in 1847. Our next autumn, following a July city range of 17.4 to 18.0, is the autumn of 1870. This is completely different, 1870. This is completely different with low pressure in the Atlantic and into Western Europe as well. Deep low pressure, very unsettled autumn indeed, with a strong westerly jet stream um, and yeah, it just looks like a very wet autumn. Probably quite a mildish autumn, I would have thought, but uh, but certainly very wet in 1817. Quite a long gap then through to 1900. The next time we have a July with a C in a you know the CT range of 17.4 to 18.0 is in fact uh, 1900 and this one has low pressure to our north and extending down uh, the western side of Europe with high pressure pulled out into the middle of the North Atlantic. So this one is a quite an unsettled autumn, probably quite a mildish autumn as well, I would have thought, uh, Atlantic driven and uh, an unsettled and mix. Just one year on is 1901, uh, the next time we have a July city range of 17.4 to 18.0. This one is much more anticyclonic, with uh, high pressure tending to be sitting to the north of the UK and Ireland, and low pressure tending to be across southern Europe. And that means we've got a very easterly looking uh, autumn here. So relatively dry with this one, I would have thought, got a bit of dry weather. Um, of course, autumn's a transitional season, so if you get most easterly winds, in uh in september then it is likely to be quite warm but if you get most of these winds in november then of course it's likely to be uh, a lot colder 
Uh, pretty long gap again, through to 1923. So this one is a very wet autumn indeed, with deep low pressure across northern and uh, western Europe. Look at all those below average heights there, sitting almost over top of the UK. So that's a very wet autumn in 1923. And then our next autumn is going to be 1933. This is like a continuation of an extended dry period that occurs during the middle, uh, during the uh, early years, 1930s, I should say. So this this one, anticyclonic autumn with high pressure tending to be to our north and northwest and low pressure tending to be to our south. And that means that we bring in, uh, again, quite a lot of easterly winds uh, during this uh, autumn. Again, it's a transitional season, so that kind of scenario in September is likely to be quite quite warm. But if you get that scenario in November, then it could be uh, a lot colder. Overall, a relatively dry uh, season with that one. Uh, we've got 1945. It's a very warm uh, autumn, especially in, so in September. It has a very, very warm September with low pressure to our west and high pressure is away to our east. And that means we draw up the wing from like a southerly type direction. So so a warm but wet autumn in 1949, exceptionally uh, warm in September. Uh, 1955 is our next autumn, following a July city range of 17.4 to 18.0. This one is more anticyclonic with high pressure uh, over the UK and to our west. This, again, is another one of those extended summers. The summer begins in the spring and it still goes on into September and October in particular of 1955. So it's a warm and dry uh, autumn, uh, to, uh, to be honest, until November and then it does start getting uh, more unsettled. Uh, then we've got 1975, so another pretty long gap again until we get a July city range of 17.4 to 18.0. Um, this one is a relatively dry and warm spring, um, warm autumn as well, with winds sort of in from an easterly type direction. It does have a wet September in 1975, but otherwise it's uh, it's quite a dryish uh, and warmish uh, sort of autumn. It's in the midst of like a prolonged dry uh, period, but starts. Uh, you know, early in 1975 and goes on to the summer of, of 1976. Most of most of the seasons in the middle of the 1970s are dry. Autumn 75 is no one of those, but it does have a wet September. Uh, and another long gap to 1994. So the autumn of 1994 looks like this. Generally anticyclonic signals with higher pressure tending to be across northern and western Europe. There's a wet September in 1994. Uh, and an exceptionally mild November. In fact, I think November 1994 is still the mildest, uh, warmest on record. Um, I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think it is. So, uh, so yeah, that's a warm autumn, but it does have a cool and uh, wet September. Uh, we've got 1999. This is just a rather nondescript sort of autumn. Again, really reasonably dry, high pressure, tend to be to our west. Again, it does have a very warm September. It has a hot September in uh, 1999. And then the rest of the uh, rest of the autumn is just generally quite unsettled and uh, mixed. The next autumn is 2003. This again is quite an anticyclonic uh, autumn, following a July city range of 17.4 to 18.0. Uh, again, lots of higher pressure around the UK in the North Atlantic, across the northern parts of Europe. Lower pressure to our south uh, as well. So that is uh, that's a cooler uh, that has a cooler October. Warm and dry September, cooler October, and then November is rather a dank, uh, dismal sort of month in 2003. 2014 shows up uh, next. So this is a uh, very warm autumn, possibly the warmest on record. Has high pressure to our east, low pressure is to the west with wind coming up from the south a lot of the time during the autumn of 2014. And then finally, we have 2019, the last time we had a July CT range of 17.4 to 18.0, uh, was in 2019. And so the autumn of 2019 is actually quite cool and wet. It has high pressure over Greenland and low pressure Trough of low pressure over UK and Western uh, Europe. A cold, wet autumn in 2019. Absolutely no sign whatsoever of a polar vortex of doom that appears for the winter of 2019-2020 there, interestingly. You probably look at that autumn and think that we're in for a cold winter. But of course, the winter that follows that is exceptionally warm, or exceptionally mild, and exceptionally wet as well. So it just goes to show sometimes autumn does not tell you what's going to happen in the following winter. 
painter, and that is uh, that's a good example of that. Uh, right, let's start putting it all together then. Uh, so this is how all September's combined are looking following a July CT range of 17.4 to 18.0. So uh, we tend to get higher pressure to our east, uh, lower pressure to our northwest and, and west. Um, so it's quite a bit of an anticyclonic scene. You know, it's a bit of a west east split, actually, by the look of it. So some of these Septembers could be quite unsettled. Some of them could be relatively warm and dry. I think there is a signal for, uh, for it to be quite a warmish sort of month, though, because uh, I think the wind is coming up from like a southerly direction uh, a lot of the time. So quite warm and, you know, uh, mixed, uh, I would say, for September. All October's combined, look at cold and wet, uh, with high pressure tending to be out to our west and going up towards Greenland and low pressure extending across northern and western Europe. So clearly that is a cold and wet uh, type pattern for October following a July CT range of 17.4 to 18.0. And then all November's combined uh, look like sets, it sets up a Scandinavian high, uh, really. So uh, these could be anticyclonic and quite cold, uh, with winds in from like an easterly uh, direction, low pressure cut off uh, around Spain. So uh, more anticyclonic. Uh, get rid of that. Uh, more anti-cyclonic anti for November, um, but, uh, but but maybe a bit colder. And all autumns combined, uh, following a July city range of 17.4 to 18.0. Uh, again, it is anti-cyclonic, so despite that unsettled uh, October pattern that we see there, overall these autumns are relatively anti-cyclonic. Just to narrow things down, look at years after 1950, the most relevant years to, uh, you know, the, the current climate. Uh, it looks like this. So this is how all September's combined are uh, looking following, or, following autumn. Uh, it's how all September's combined are looking following a July CT range of 17.4 to 18.0 post 1950. More unsettled, interestingly, for September. The low pressure deepens and get, gets closer to us. Again, it's a relatively warm uh, single, I think, bring up wind from like a southerly southwest direction, but uh, clearly September is a little bit more unsettled there after 1950, which maybe is a bit of a surprise, uh, really. Uh, all Octobers combined set up Greenland blocking, so still looking quite cold for these Octobers after 1950. Perhaps not quite as unsettled, but definitely quite a coldish signal for those uh, Octobers with the uh, wind coming in from more of a north or northeasterly direction. Uh, all November's combined, again, very similar uh, situation with a Scandinavian high and wind coming in off the continent. So again, you will envisage that is quite a cold signal for November, a relatively dry and anticyclonic after 1915. And then finally, uh, all autumn's combined following a July CT range of 17.4 to 18.0 post-1950. Looks like that. And it's anticyclonic with high pressure tending to be over to the east of the country low pressure is to our south. So a relatively dry autumn, relatively dry season is favoured here after these uh, after this July CT range. Um, but, uh, but you know, variable temperatures. October looks quite cold. November temp potentially is a little, little bit cold as well, but quite warm in September perhaps. Right, so that's it for the 7th Autumn 2021 update. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share, subscribe if you did enjoy it. As I said, we're getting ever closer now to, uh, to, to our Autumn forecast that we're going to be releasing on the 29th of August. So not long uh, to go at all uh, now. Just around another three updates. I think next week we'll be looking at July, England and Wales precipitation. We've still got ENSO to look at uh, as well. So there's still a bit to get through, but we are getting towards the end of the autumn updates uh, now. Uh, you can watch this video on demand whenever you want through the Autumn Updates uh, playlist on the YouTube homepage. So check it out. Uh, check out playlist and you'll be able to see all of the uh, Autumn Updates that we've done over the past couple of months. And uh, that's great. Thank you so much everybody for doing that. Going to be back later on with Gaz over the same route. And then live stream at 6. So I shall see you then uh, for that. But for the 7th Autumn 2021 update, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.